Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endure us forever. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which giveth life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers, the 21st chapter, beginning at the fourth verse. From Mount Hor, they set out by the, by the way of the, to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to give away, to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it on a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Here endeth the lesson. The gradual is Psalm 107, verses 1 to 3 and 17 to 22. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is gracious, and his mercy endureth forever. Let them give thanks whom the Lord hath redeemed and delivered from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, and from the north and from the south. Foolish men are plagued for their offense and because of their wickedness their soul abhorred all manner of meat, and they were even hard at death's door. So when they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, he delivered them out of their distress. He sent his word and healed them, and they were saved from their destruction. Oh, that men would therefore praise the Lord for his goodness and declare the wonders that he doeth for the children of men, that they would offer unto him the sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell out his works with gladness. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, 
the second chapter beginning at the first verse. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by, by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Jesus. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, Amen. So today we're talking about Jesus and the bronze serpent. We read the scripture, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. And of course that's perhaps the, the best known verse in the whole New Testament. What isn't so well known is the sentence right before it. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, 
so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. And of course, this conversation, these sentences occur in a conversation he's having with Nicodemus, remember, who comes to him at night. We'll get to that. That short, seemingly obscure reference is a throwback to an early event in the life of God's people, the Israelites, as they journeyed in the wilderness after having been freed from slavery in Egypt. Understanding that story will enrich our understanding of who Jesus is and what he came to do for us. So, what happened? Throughout the Israelites' journey in the wilderness, God took care of them. He gave them manna to eat, quails for meat, water to drink. God provided for their needs, and yet they turned against him in the desire for something more than what they had. The flesh pots of Egypt, they remember. Now, nostalgia. Nostalgia should be counted as a sin because nostalgia always makes things seem better than they were. That very expression, make America great again, is a nostalgia for something that is perceived as being better in the past. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There's no food, no water. We loathe this worthless stuff, this manna. But there was food and water. God had given them that. This complaint exposed their selfish discontent with what they had been given. They were ungrateful, forgetting that they had been rescued from slavery. These gracious provisions of God didn't seem enough. They wanted something more. You remember Dickens Oliver, more, more, he cried for, for food uh, in, in the home that he was put for orphans, more. It says God gave them something more, poisonous serpents. These serpents bit people and many died. It was because of these serpents the Israelites realized that they had sinned against God and asked Moses to pray for them, that God might take away these snakes. Moses did as the people asked, and God had mercy on them. God commands Moses to lift up on a pole a bronze serpent so that everyone who was bitten could look at it, and if they looked at it, they would live. Well, now that doesn't seem to make much sense. Looking at a bronze serpent on a pole can't really remove deadly venom coursing through your veins. But in the ancient times of Exodus, it can, if God says so, and ancient people believed, and I think this is an important point, that snakes had life-renewing powers because when they shed their skin, they were thought to have been reborn, born again into new life. So let's go back to John. Jesus says, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Remember, we just said, Jesus was talking to Nicodemus. And what was that whole conversation about? Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again of water and the Spirit. Nicodemus says, can a man be born twice? Can he go back into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus is saying, no, I'm talking to you about a spiritual truth not a literal one. And of course, the serpent, I think, figures in here because the serpent was a symbol of being born again because a snake sheds its skin and comes out with a new skin and the people of Jesus' day thought that meant that the snake might have eternal life, at least that secret of being reborn. 
Jesus came to this world because deadly venom does course through our veins too. It's called sin. Adam and Eve, our first parents, were snake bitten. Like the Israelites in the wilderness, God graciously provided for their need, yet they turned against him in the desire for something more, that, that one forbidden fruit. The ancient serpent, Satan, tempted them and they gave in, bringing sin into their lives and into the creation itself. And the venom of sin is passed from generation to generation. You have it, I have it, our kids have it. It's why you'll never have to teach your sin, your children how to be bad. They know that. It's why our hearts are filled with so much hatred, violence, abuse, racism, pride, selfishness, jealousy, adultery. It's why we journey through the wilderness of this life, often craving something more than what God has provided. We have a sin problem. We've inherited it and we commit it. This venom is deadly. It's killing us. But God has mercy on us. God promised a Savior who would crush the head of the serpent, undoing the deadly consequences of sin, while he himself would be bitten. This Savior, Jesus, the Son of God, was lifted up to the death on the pole of the cross. When Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, he lifted up that which was killing people. God, in effect, was declaring, look, that which is killing you is now hanging on a pole. I have put away the snake and its venom. I have put away your sin. Look at the serpent in faith and live. Jesus is our bronze serpent. He became that which was killing us, as St. Paul declared, for our sake. He made him, that is Jesus, to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So Jesus was snake bitten for us. He became our sin, lifted up on the cross. The sin we've inherited, the sins we commit, the sins we will commit. All of it hung on the pole of the cross in the person of Jesus. Look, the sin that is killing you is hanging on the pole of the cross. God has put away your sin. Look to Jesus in faith and live. Oh, it was a horrible sight to look at Christ on the cross. It must have been horrible to look at Moses' bronze snake. But those with the courage to do so were healed. That's the relationship between John's two sentences in Jesus' conversation. Let's read those words one more time. After he talks about the snake, Moses, he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now think of the snake in some ways as a symbol of eternal life, and even the horrible aspect of Christ on the cross as God showing us that symbol of his victory over death. God had mercy on Adam and Eve because he loved them. He had mercy on Israelites because he loved them. Why does he have mercy on you? Because he loves you. He loves me. One more time. He did it because he loves us. He loves us so much that even though we've turned against him, forgetting his goodness, craving more than he provides, he sent his son to become our sin and die our death to ensure that you and I will not perish but have eternal life. That's love right there. Anyone who looks to Jesus in faith and sees not just a poor human prisoner dying on a cross, but rather the loving sacrifice of God's Messiah on our behalf. That person who looks on Christ on his cross, that person will not perish, but have eternal life. Amen.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. ever-living God, who in thy holy word hast taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Michael, our primate, Eugene and Robert, our bishops, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacrament. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly in serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, Lawrence, our governor, and Brandon, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O oh Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that, rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance, and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Robert, Ethan, Gabrielle, the Lay family, the Doom family, Diane, Kelly, Carolyn, Paula, Phil, Joan, David, Aline, Charles, the Lopresto family, Dean, Frank, Catherine, Gail, Kent, Claudia, Gail, Aurora, Joyce, Vernon, Barb, Andrew, Thomas, Christine, Caroline, Colleen, Alyssa, John, Russell, Anne, Rita, Michael, Walter, Tim, Baby Scarlet and her parents, Casey Lynn, Martin, Andre, Gary, Joanne, the destitute ministered to by the Sisters of St. Margaret in Malcolm. Haiti, those endangered by armed conflict, the unemployed, the homeless, those traveling, the imprisoned among them, Ted, Jennifer, yes. 
and dream. And all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. Especially Kevin, Sally, our deceased benefactors, those who have died by pandemic, violence, battle, or murder, and those who have died suddenly and unprepared. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace, so to follow the good examples of Our Lady, Blessed John, and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins. Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and through faith turn up again, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the sufficient offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Let us say together the Easter greeting. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We want to remind everyone that with joy, next Sunday, we will have a service which all of you can attend at 10.30. It'll be the first time for several months that the diocese has permitted us to open, and I hope you will be with us. We continue our preparation for the Easter season. And that service will be on Sunday, not Saturday. Yes, it will be on Sunday, uh, <laughs> not on Saturday, which we're recording this, but you will hear it on Sunday. Um, but it will be next Sunday, the 21st. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
thanks to the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and an institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that as precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all the other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may wear thee to receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And those who are not present here, you will be receiving Christ in a spiritual way into your hearts this day. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs to hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be with you this Sunday and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.